Hello, podcast fans. Adam Carolla here. I'm leading the fight against patent trolls who are threatening this medium. It's not about me. It's about the podcast you're listening to right now. If I go down, this show could be next. Visit fundanything.com forward slash patent troll for more information on how you can keep podcasting alive. Thank you and mahalo. When shopping for car insurance, consider this. GEICO has been saving people money on car insurance for over 75 years. So if you're serious about savings, it's simple. Go to GEICO.com. After 75 years, they know how to save you money. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or woman. Put your name on it. I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. If you wanna battle, it's either that you will or you won't. You know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Hey, man. More Stories Podcast, Adam Ferrara. Hey, pal. Hiya, buddy boy. Nice to be back, my friend. I like when you text back and forth with Adam Ferrara. Mm-hmm. Uh, you always, you always, it's always pal. It's like, uh, it's the nomenclature. You're always- uh, You're my pal. You you are my pal, but yeah. you text exactly how you talk in real life. Yeah, th- there's not much of a stretch. This is pretty much it. There's not a lot of hitting meaning in me. You're not going to get Gary Oldman. God, he transforms into something else. It does. That doesn't happen. You're not the uh, Gary Oldman of comedy? No. Nah. I, th- I like to think Gary Oldman is the Adam Ferrara of acting. I love your thinking, pal. You like that? I do. Uh, so Congratulations. There's... Last time we did this, we were in a garage. No, we're I'm st- <laughs> still doing it in the garage. This uh, We're doing this More Stories podcast because Adam Ferrara was nice enough to uh, meet me in the afternoon right after my radio show, Jay Moore Sports. You, mm-hmm. you came in right at the end of that. Thank you. We were... Thank you for the audience of sweaty men. This yeah, is... it's a sausage party in here. This we got is, some. Uh... This is fucking great. <laughs> I figured, what will make Adam Ferrara happy? It's Let's get a this and runway of... season in Milan. Wow. A bunch of dudes staring at you <laughs> as you sit here. What's the name of your car show? So I don't forget. Top Gear. Top Gear. Now, yeah. when do you guys come back on the air in Top Gear? Uh, we just we will come back September 30th. We have four more episodes that we just wrapped up. September 30th? September 30th, we come back. And you're going to be in where in Washington State? Uh, stand up by September 6th. Uh, I'll be at Tacoma Comedy Club. One night only, September 6th. Why one night only? I got shit to do. <laughs> I got laundry. I got a lot of things to do. All right. Top Gear, September 30th. Yeah. We'll and what back. channel is that? Uh, it's History. Now, what's historical about the cars? Is that because uh, History Channel now is just gone? It used to just be the Hitler Channel. Yeah, yeah. If you wanted to see anything about the Mein Führer? Yeah, you put on the History Channel. And I used to watch it all the time. I loved it because we win, and you know how it ends. You don't have to like <laughs> if you ending. fall asleep. You're like, ah, I know how this ends. Uh, how, they never found Hitler's body, did they? They no. He he was he, he shot himself. Or he got po- or he who shot himself? He either shot Ava Braun shot him, and then there was poison. There was a bullet. And then the Russians came in and go, we have the skull. Fuck you. That's the I most think. Jewish explanation. There was a poison and a bullet and the yeah. Russians came in. I don't know. There were so much things going on. You should have just said all that in Yiddish. In Yiddish, there was so poison. So when you go, did they, does Top Gear approach Adam Ferrara to mm-hmm. do the show or do you I audition? had done another show. I was, uh, Rescue Me was coming to an end. Um, and I always wanted to do something with cars because I like cars. So I did this other show called The United States of Cars for History. It was a show that told, um, it was a cultural look at... Uh, it was 1969. I took a Volkswagen uh, Beetle and a GTO. And who drove those cars and what was going on at that time and what did those cars represent to the people who drove them? They, they, we shot the pilot. They liked me. They didn't like the show. They had the rights to pop Top Gear. And they said, you know, we're going we're gonna to do, uh, you know, the show Top Gear. And I was a fan from the internet. And they said, we're going to do the show. My first thought, Jay, was don't fuck it up because it was a perfect fucking show. I'm like, don't fuck it up. And he says, we want you to be in it. I'm like, well, I don't want to fuck it up. So meet the other guys because it was done by the same production company. So I met the other two guys, and they're British guys. No, the other two guys were Tanner Faust and Rutledge, Rutledge Wood. The two. What guys. am I thinking of? You're thinking of the British show. These uh-huh. were the other two guys they had for the American show. I was thinking of the young ones from. Uh, Remember the young ones on MTV? We used to watch show. those. That oh, was great. Oh, I met great. Rutledge at the NASCAR Awards. Yeah. 
He's yeah. a great guy. And he's a good and a sweet man. Mm. He's great. And Tana Faust is great. And I like the guys. And they didn't want to do an imitation of the show because that's I didn't want to read for the part of Clarks. And I just you can't imitate that show. They just wanted us to be us in that context. And I like the guys. And I figured, well, we'll take a shot. And that's what took off. Top Gear, September 30th, History Channel. All plugs are done. Listen. Uh, oh, don't forget to go see Adam. Listen, I put my name on it. Adam Ferrara, <laughs> you will never not get your money's worth. There's never oh, a bad... Ch- it's true, Adam. You know you're a good comic. You know you're a great comic. We work hard at it. I saw you at the Beacon. Remember oh, a when, while when ago. You did the Beacon? At, at Dennis Leary's charity? Years ago. No, no. You was your show... I oh, forget. when I filmed my special? I think that was it. I was at the, your special. The good old days when I was playing the same rooms as the Black Crows. That's a, yeah. oh, oh, how the mighty have fallen. You're my Chris Robinson. <laughs> remedy, remedy, remedy. <laughs> buddy of mine told me a story. Chris Robinson, uh, towards the tail end of the Black Crows, before they disintegrated. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Robinson, I was told, somebody he has somebody, an assistant, that has like a coffee grinder, and they grind up mushrooms into powder. Really? And they go by Echinacea from like GNC uh-huh. or like Whole Foods, empty the capsules of Echinacea, mm-hmm. and they fill it with mushroom powder. Right. So like every night at Soundcheck, they're like, hey, here's your juice, here's your vitamin C, here's your Echinacea. And everybody in the band is like, wow, look at Chris getting his act together. And then two songs in, he starts looking at his hands yeah. like, sometimes <laughs> salvation. Yeah. Whoa. In the eye of the... Th- Does everyone see the dragon? Yeah. Does anybody remember? <laughs> <laughs> he looks over at Audley Freed and thinks he is Jimmy fuck? Page. Wow. Yeah, he's tripping Jimmy balls. Jimmy Page, did, they did the Greek with Jimmy. Yeah, they yeah. did a big one. I know a couple Black Crow stories that would blow your mind. Jimmy Page... That one just did. You got more? Oh, I got a lot of Black Crow stories. A friend of mine was a roadie for the Black Crows, mm-hmm. and they were touring with Jimmy Page, like three dates with Jimmy Page. One yeah. of them was the actual Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Right. Because when you think Led Zeppelin and the Black Crows, you think friendly stand-up comedy, middle America. 11.30. We love, you and I both, huge Jay Leno fans. Yeah. Black Crows, Jimmy Page, a weird one. Yeah. Uh, maybe more Letterman, nighttime mm-hmm. you know, gritty, grimy. Mm-hmm. Maybe the Don Fallon. Kirshner's rock concert, if <laughs> that was Kirshner. still on. Yeah, K-Tel Records, something. <laughs> yeah, a midnight special. So, <laughs> so uh, Rich Robinson is sitting by the pool. They're at a hotel in L.A. They're supposed to play Irvine Meadows. They have mm-hmm. one day off, and they're all just at, like, this hotel in Hollywood. And Rich right. Robinson's by the pool. It's like 9 in the morning. He's got a good, this. All right, he has his guitar out. At the, at the pool. I play guitar. I would have done it. When I, when I was in the no, band No, not college. if you were in the Black Crows, you wouldn't. Well, I don't know. You're the Black Crows. Yeah. If you right. got your guitar out at the pool, it's just to... If, okay, look. If, if I'm taking mushrooms at soundcheck, no, there's not rich. a lot of logical decisions yeah, being made. Yeah, but this is the other one. This is Rich, the brother. Oh, okay. So Rich, the brother, has his guitar out at the pool, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a bunch of chicks. They've been up all night. Jimmy Page goes, hey, I'd like to talk to you. And he goes, hey, uh, you know, no secrets, me and my friends, you know. I'm paraphrasing a lot of this. Right, story. okay. Protect the uh, guilty. Okay. <laughs> so Rich Robinson basically says, like, you know, Jimmy Page is like, why don't you, yeah. maybe you and I could go over here and have a conversation. It's yeah. Jimmy Page. Yeah. And Rich Robinson goes, hey, man, you know, it's just me and my friends hanging out and tell me right now. Jimmy Page goes, all right. Jimmy Page goes, you know, I got like uh, 30 years of Led Zeppelin stuff I've been sitting on for a long time. Yeah. And all the riffs that I've just never been able to use. Your band, the Black Crows, is the first band I've ever felt that way, that I felt with Led Zeppelin. That's why I'm touring with you guys. And I, I'd like to produce, like, your next album and give you some of these riffs. And Rich Robinson just goes, but for, listen, we're, we're the Black Crows, man. Wow. We're all right. Jimmy Page says this to you. And Rich Robinson said, we're, we're all right. We're all right. We're the Black Crows. Appreciate it. So a little time goes by. Phone call comes in, and uh, the band's told, they go, we got a problem. They go, what's the problem? It's like 2 in the morning. Mm-hmm. They go, Jimmy's home. And they go, well, is he going to make it to Irvine Meadows in time? They go, no, London. Jimmy's home. He's London. <laughs> so he went from L.A. He was so <laughs> pissed off. It's Jimmy Page. Yeah, but it's Jimmy Page. He, uh, you'd be lucky he just went home. He could slap a fucking hex on you. Oh, with all the right. black magic shit. Yeah, he lives You go like... play your guitar, it turns into a snake or some shit. I wouldn't fuck with Jimmy Page. He went home. Yeah, what happened? I'm peeing smoke! You know, some fucking thing, they, some fucking hex they put on you. I'm not fucking with Jimmy at all. I forgot how much, when we were kids, we yeah. thought Jimmy Page was like an actual devil worshiper. Yeah. And then he like helped us think that, because he bought like Aleister Crowley's house. He bought the house. He bu- the, the haunted he... axe murderer house Yeah, in he England. bought that kind of shit. He was writing stuff. If you play Led Zeppelin 2 backwards, it rains or some 
it rains, it rains and it frogs like, or something. Yeah. Yeah. And how many times on the vinyl did you play Led Zeppelin two backwards? Oh, yeah. You know how many times I'm like, don't open that album cover, man. You know, Zeppelin. It'll with, freak you out. With the guy standing on the big, the, the, the lantern. guy ascending with the lantern. Zoso, Led Zeppelin 4, the album that has 18 names. Yeah. Led Zeppelin 4, Zoso, Zoso, Lantern Man. Lantern. And when they had the symbols and, and, Plants and pages symbol because they were the strongest symbols were on the outside and Bonhams and uh, 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 John Paul Jones was on the inside. I didn't and, know that. Yeah, they're the, they're the weaker symbols, so they're on the inside. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, come on, you used to get high, and then uh, <laughs> and John Bonham symbol is my it, file. Man. <laughs> and John Bonham symbols actually, if you look close enough, it was the label for Ballantine's beer. Really, the three circles. And he died of alcoholism. Oh, the hilarity! My God, lock the door. <laughs> You go paranoid. Jimmy Page was thought of to be an actual devil worshiper. Now, yeah. to people younger than you and I, mm-hmm. a couple of guys hoofing it in our forties. Yeah. You know, music today there is. There, I don't know if there is like an actual like devil worshiping crew. No, of, like, well, nobody's... it was demonic because it, it's soulless. It's all auto tuned. Yeah, you know? so like they really no... missed out. Like you really. As good as you think music is, you really have no idea because you're listening to Zeppelin after the fact. Adam Ferrara and I were afraid to unfold sure. the actual inside liner notes because there was a hex in it that yeah. Jimmy Page put on. Yeah, we were scared. You don't want to do that. And I remember we did Acid in Boston. It was me and like seven comics. It was like Steve. Remember Cato and Morin, the mm-hmm. comedy team? Yeah. We were and Anthony Clark. I don't know if Anthony Clark Anthony was there, Clark. but we all were on mushrooms or acid. Something. We were tripping balls, whatever the fuck it was. Might right. have been both. And we watched Song Remains the Same. Yeah. And we all, like, looked at each other and we're like, oh, like, he is the devil. Yeah, with like the so-so with the, the big wide pants. And he's right, he's on a black got... horse. He's wearing the yeah. black uh, jumpsuit with yeah. the red rose up the yeah, side. Yeah, and they got concert footage and he's playing guitar with the bow. We're mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. The Thurman he had. The Thurman. Yeah, he's we're playing woo, the Thurman. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, we're that like, look, thing? he's making music with his hands, yeah. man. Fuck, he's not an instrument. He, he thought it was the devil, but it was just, it was heroin addiction. He's yeah. pretty working in 77. Robert I mean, Plant's holding a white dove. He was mm-hmm. all that was good. Yeah. Jimmy Page is wearing all black on a black horse with, like, a helmet on it. He's yeah. playing a theremin. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and we're, like, sitting there going, we're afraid to listen to this shit. But it was so, the Zeppelin was just, like, that, and it was always the old younger kids, like, Kiss. So there was, like, that end of it and the other end of it. There was the circus. Kiss was the feel-good devil worship. Yeah. Did Kiss- you read? Did you read Paul Stanley's book? Should I? No, I did it's, not. It's pretty good. What's it called? Uh, a life something. A, I don't know. I got a star on my head. Whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> but, but it was, it was good. I mean, if it, it brings you back. You How know, great would that be if you go to Borders right now and it says, yeah. I uh, I don't fucking know. I got a star in my head or yeah. something. By I'm Paul looking Stanley. for the book. Uh, the, the the one the new biography. I got a star in my head. Yeah, something okay. Fucking. Don't you know, in the know. back. I used to play with a demon. <laughs> But yeah, Zeppelin to me was just like, I, and I could always play the beginning of songs on the guitar. <laughs> I always guy. get so, got right until it gets complicated. I'm like, ah, I got to stop. That's how I play chess. Yeah. Eight moves in, I have your ass. That's Really? Yeah, because I read a chess book, but I didn't finish it. <laughs> so the first like two chapters, <laughs> the first two chapters are like yeah. attacks. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby Fischer, and then you, the ninth move is King Me. I le- yeah, I just... <laughs> I just left the book like on a subway. <laughs> so like I start real tight and then once my guys start dropping, it's like yeah. fucking Normandy. They just start dropping. Like, oh, yeah. Flies. Yeah. I, I, well, that's the thing with, with, with books. I start them and then I always feel like I, that pressure and guilt if you don't finish your book. Yeah. So now I don't enjoy it anymore because I'm beating the shit out of myself. Uh, I didn't finish the book. You ever finished a book you hated just on principle? Mm, no. I haven't either. I'm fishing, not on principle. Moby I remember Dick. when I graduated college. I graduate college, right? Where'd you go to college? Marist College in Poughkeepsie. I went with uh, Rick, Rick Smith. Smith. I, Rick Smith was a flying Dutchman. He was a, he was a couple years ahead of me, but he used to play. We used to go watch him play. There's a guy in, in the, the opening credits. And Drafton Davis. And Drafton Davis was your doorman. Yeah. I came to pick you up. We were playing softball. And I came to pick you up, and there's the friggin' doorman. And I went to college with him. It just goes to show, kids, if uh, you're an NBA hotshot mm-hmm. or a prospect, you might want to go to class. Yeah. Because you could be my doorman. Don't take the echinacea if Chris Robinson offers it to you. You know what happened with Drafton Davis? Mm. He told me he was afraid to fly. Really? And I said, well, because I was like, so do you think you could have gone pro? He goes, no, I definitely would have went pro. And I was like, well, if you definitely, we were very friendly, Drafton. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like I was breaking his balls. I go, I was, but it wasn't like I was being mean. Right. We were Because th- I'm about to say sounds harsh. Okay. I go, bullshit, if you're going to be an NBA player, why the fuck are you do- my doorman? And mm. he goes, and he like pulled me aside. He goes, can't fly, man. I go, really? Wow. He goes, can't fly. And then I asked like <clears throat> a 
four or five other guys that were like real knowledgeable at college basketball, and they yeah. go, "Oh, Drafton Davis definitely would have been a pro." Yeah, I used to, yeah, I watched them play. Wow, that's really yeah. It was him and Schmitz were there when I was Rick when Smith, was the school. Flying Dutchman. There's a big stiff white guy in the opening credits of Scooby Doo. It's mm-hmm. like a, it's not like a Frankenstein type. Oh, guy. the guy with the mask like this, who's hunched <laughs> over the back. I'm doing this on a podcast. That's good. <laughs> Like just this, like Rick Smith. Yeah, he looks like Rick Smith, but he's all hunched over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had a girlfriend, a little the, redhead girlfriend. The monster on Scooby Doo. The monster on Scooby Doo with a little redhead. And Rick Smith had the bad. They had the exact same hair. Yeah. So you went to Maris. And you I were went, telling a story about college. Oh, I went to Maris. I, I forget what the hell. Uh, I forget what the story was going because the ADD is raging right now. Doug Benson said this should be called more digressions. Yeah, <laughs> more stories. He's not wrong. How about this? Think of your story and everybody go to the Amazon banner at jmore.com instead of going, I'm not going to read anything today because mm-hmm. I just want to keep uh, it tight with Adam because Adam brings the heat. Oh, it was about reading Let the book. Let me finish. I'm sorry, there's more? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, instead of going to Amazon.com, like just take it off your toolbar, put jmore.com. And then mm-hmm. anytime you go like, hey, I should go to Amazon, go to jmore.com, click the Amazon banner, boom, you're inside Amazon. And all Amazon wants to know is that you got there through jmore.com i get a kickback and all the money is direct deposit to my two sons uh college fund email me what you bought i'm gonna read it on the podcast adam what were you saying my friend now i forgot mm. you happy you no, fucked it all happy. up i'm an inconsolable right? i want you dude. to remember something remember there's a creative energy that wants to express itself through you and when that happens you can't stop it i don't want to stop it i'm sorry i just read it on the fucking wall behind you <laughs> All right, we're doing All this right. podcast so in do- Vito Violante's office from Fox Sports Radio, mm-hmm. and he has these fucking creepy motivational things yeah. pinned on his wall. Well, he's got Emerson. Emerson's cool. I like that, but, you know, you can't Lake and see. Lake Palmer? Yeah, you, you can- Emerson, Lake, and Palmer's cool. Welcome. So anyway, I, I graduate. We're talking about finishing a book. <laughs> yes. We, we fin- I, I graduate college. Right? I get out. I, I, I told I get out doing the ballerina. My grade point average was a 2-2. Right, so I just get out, and my mother's. I get. I'm in my little my little gown and everything. My mother hugs me. I'm so proud of you. My father shakes my shakes my hand and goes, "Boy, did you bullshit your way through this? Because <laughs> you right? fooled these fuck." Yeah, the only book I ever read, front to back, with a college degree, was Willie Moscone's Winning Pocket Billiards. <laughs> <laughs> at while you were at Maris, that was it. That was the only book I ever read, cover to cover. And I and I still can't masse a ball, but. I, I know the theory behind it. That was the only... I bullshitted my way through everything. It is amazing when you're in school, like, all the books they tell you. First of all, in high school, you have to read certain books. And I was... I got in some AP English class, and we were mm-hmm. lucky. It was, like, Brave New World, Fahrenheit 451. Everybody's got to read Lord of the Flies. Yeah. Like, these the, are actual... The Pearl. The, Steinbeck's The Pearl we had I to read. I fucking hated The Pearl. Yeah. And I thought it sucked. Juan Tomas with the hat. I'll take off the fucking hat. Sell The Pearl. Move on with your life. Stop man in the, the box. Leave me alone, man in the box. Yeah. I hated half these books. Some of them I really liked. But then when I got out of high school, I'm like, you know, there's so many classics yeah. that everyone talks about. Mm-hmm. So I go get Moby Dick. And I'm in a house. 30 pages in, I'm rooting for the whale. I started <laughs> it, too. I did. Melville, I, I get it. But I bo- put it down. You hey, born the shit out of me. You know why? 120 pages. I looked down. They weren't in the water yet. They, really? Yeah. Hun- and I'm like, what? The- they're building the boat. There's a yeah. weird, like, half-Indian guy running yeah. through the village. We're still in the first act. They're in a <laughs> bar. Like, why are they in a boat? It's called Moby Dick, not Moby Cocktail. <laughs> the fuck? You know, Adam, I want to I you get something. it. Your name is Ishmael. There's a creative energy that wants to express itself through you. Mm-hmm. Then Whose he has quote the- is that, Vito? I don't remember. Uh, nice. Good old, <laughs> good old what's-his-name. It was part of the What book? Uh, the Artist's Guide. The artist guy. Like okay. Nobody knows the name of a goddamn book on this podcast. I actually, you know, Did I you read started. Carol Leifer's book. She was just on. No, she had a succeed like in show, uh, business without really crying. It's, <laughs> it's funny. fantastic. That's great. Like opening for Sinatra. Yeah. And like really cool. Yeah. I didn't know she opened for Sinatra. Yeah, and he liked her, and she called uh, Larry Miller. She said she was panic stricken. Mm-hmm. He goes, "You got to make the crowd think like you're Frank's like check." Right. So she would walk out on stage like the second night she went. You know, when Mr. Sinatra asked me to be on this show with him, right. and then that, that one sentence, the whole crowd was like, hey, it's Frank Schoolman. Yeah. Right. <laughs> she said Frank, like like one of the worst comedians of all time, Frank Sinatra, but nobody ever had the heart to tell Frank. Yeah. She, I said that. She didn't say that. Right. But he'd go, hey, that uh, Carol Leaf was big. She'll knock you over for the phone. <laughs> And the crowd yeah. would like give him a standing over, like, ah! Yeah. Did you ever see Sinatra? No, I never I saw, saw him at the end, 1990. I saw him at Radio City Music Hall. And how was it? It was so awful. Yeah. When he sang, yeah. there was like a glimpse of like, holy shit, I am watching Frank Sinatra. Yeah. But then he stopped 
and he sat on a stool and he read jokes off of index oh. card. He goes, <clears throat> Mayor Marion Barry. This is one he actually read. Mayor Marion Barry has a plan to reduce crime in Washington, D.C. by 50%. Mm. He's moving. <laughs> And they're like, yeah. You see it coming. And as a comic in the upper deck, I'm like, this is not like I had anxiety. Yeah. Well, you see, like, I it, it's it's when your power leaves you because things, you know, it was a great speech in uh, any given Sunday, the uh, Pacino's third act speech. Oh. Things just get taken. And that's just what life is. You know, it's the six inches in front of your face. You know that. It, that's the Jenna Jameson story. What? Yeah, that was it. The Jenna Jameson story. <laughs> You know, did you read Jenna Jameson's book? She she told us in her book, it said there's a creative energy that wants to express itself <laughs> Shut up. through your uh, vagina. I did I did an event and Tito Ortiz was there. He's one of the presenters. Yeah, yeah. And the whole time you're looking at this guy, you're like, why? I'm so surprised that a prize fighter and a porn star didn't work out. <laughs> and like, but he could actually like kill you. Yeah. So you have to leave every single joke on the table because hey, yeah. guys that get punched in the face for a living... Probably the art of subtlety, you know, massaging, tabling, couching jokes, sarcasm. Mm -hmm. So you just look at them and go, how are you, champ? And then you walk and go in your room and you close the door and you eat the free crackers, man. That's it. Put the shit in the bag. Let's get out of here before he realizes what I said. <laughs> Who was the best teacher you ever had in high school? Uh, the cool teacher? The best teacher I had was a guy named Jim McDermott. My girlfriend broke up. He was, he was the- uh, Your girlfriend blew what? Broke up with me. That's oh. where I was going to go. Did Easy, like, Jenna. Oh, right. Would right. you calm down? <laughs> no, we all heard it. It was like, what? Uh, it's great. A room full of guys heard the word BL and went right to a girl blew me. I'm stunned. I didn't know you were Japanese. I'm so stunned. Girlfriend broke Look, up. what lies in front of us and what lies behind us is not any way compared to what lies within us. Deep thoughts with Adam Ferrara. Ralph Waldo Emerson is just basically reading. It's hanging on the fucking wall. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. That's right. Round, um, round my about. best teacher was, uh, no, McDermott. that was Yes. All right, yes, I made a mistake. Roundabout. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Gotcha. Easy. My best teacher was, uh, he was the uh, a dean of boys, and I used to mouth off in class, and I used to get sent to the, the principal, the dean. You sit that fuck well, why down. Why the dean of boys? Because we had a big school. So it was boys, girl, girls. It was troubled boys, troubled girls. All kinds of shit was going on. All right. So he was in charge of uh, discipline you. So I went there, and he, I, he liked me. I could tell he liked me, but he had to do his job because I used to make him laugh. So my girlfriend breaks up with me. I'm not going to go to the prom. He pulls me aside. I haven't slept. I'm walking through. I, I, I'm all, you know, I'm heartbroken. You know, I'm, what, I'm 15, I'm fucking heartbroken. And I'm not going anywhere. And he pulls me aside and he goes, sit down. He goes, what happened? He goes, she broke up with me, man. You know, <laughs> he goes, this is going to happen to you again and again. He goes, when was the last time you slept? He goes, I don't know. He goes, go home. He goes, go home, slug a beer, get some sleep, come back tomorrow. He, okay, he, he told me to go home, gave me permission to Long leave Island. school, go home. Drink a beer and go to bed and get your shit together. And I went, That's that guy's cool. T Mr. McDermott. Mr. McDermott. Do you still keep in touch with that guy? Uh he came to see me do stand up on Long Island. Governors? Yeah, at Governors, yeah. I love Governors. And I was I was so pleased to see. Nothing like a comedy club run by mob cops. <laughs> Yeah, actual wise guys with badges. There was actual wise guys. That, remember the old club? And did you ever do uh, Brooklyn Toppers in Brooklyn? No. Guy Rocky used to do. Uh, he used to he used to do the announcements. Welcome to Toppers Comedy Cabaret and Cafeteria, conveniently located across from Caesar's Bay Bazaar. In our main showroom, guy's got one room. <laughs> There's one fucking room. There's not even a bar. He's got like one of those airplane bars. You know, one of those catering bars <laughs> when they walk in when the wedding's too big. The little plastic yeah. thing. That's what he's got and in the back room. In. Yeah, and they roll it in the back room and they're just they're pumping drinks out. Wait, would he go on stage and read this to the crowd? No, he'd read it over the, the oh, microphone. But I like any announcement where they tell you where you actually are. Yeah. Like, hey, everybody, conveniently located. It's like when I, from I do, it, I, I do it in my uh, show about Pearl Jam when Eddie Vedder goes, I don't know if you know this or not, but you, you're at the sports arena. I'm like, yeah, I know. I drove here. <laughs> I wasn't kidnapped by Syrian terrorists, and they put a pillowcase over my head and beat the shit out of me and said, you want to go to Pearl Jam, motherfucker? <laughs> go. And I'm like, oh, what? Jeremy Spoken. Yeah, Jeremy? You want fucking Jeremy? Even flow, infidel. Elderly woman behind the counter, Jeremy. <laughs> what is the fucking code, cocksuck? <laughs> you want Iron Sheik to piss and fuck? Laying on your bed on a pillow made of concrete, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> All right, I'll talk. Drop me off at Pearl Jam. Where yeah. am I? You're yeah. in the sports arena. Here's the launch codes. You don't, you don't scare me. There's a creative energy inside of me, you fuck. <laughs> Ralph Waldo Emerson. Yeah.
with that. My cool teacher was Tom Valenti. Oh, yeah? I was in Verona, Sounds like he New sold Jersey. you a rug. F. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Tom Valenti? You need carpets? I got them. Scotch Garden, no charge. No charge for the Scotch Garden, Tom Valenti carpets. <laughs> Area rugs, throw rugs. Maybe you need a sham or a pillar. I got them. For any of your floor covering needs, Valenti's got your back. Wall to wall? Wall to no problem. <laughs> Tom Valenti was fourth grade, and he was like the cool guy. He was just at my show. I did a show in uh, South Orange, New Jersey next to Seton Hall. Which, mm. by the way, don't get lost in South Orange, New Jersey. Ew. Because in one block, you're in East Orange, New Jersey. Ooh, boy, it's a difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So ec- well, the economic shift in that area in Jersey. In two blocks. Yeah. It goes from hist- historical to shithole in two blocks. Yeah. It's, like, it's like this. It's like cocaine, coke, crack, 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 cocaine, cocaine, cocaine. White wine, white line, white yeah. rock. That's it. He came to my show. He was the guy when I was, I was in third grade and I was bad, obviously, in school. I never stopped running my mouth. Hence why I have a podcast and do stand up for a living. And Mrs. Stein grabbed me. And like, it wasn't until like, I retold the story for the first time I realized it was actual abuse. Mm. Like she grabbed me and threw by the shirt, like picked me up, threw me into Mr. Valenti's room because he was like the new cool guy, new right. wave, yeah. no desk. He had like leather couches. Yeah. Kids are handling like lizards and shit in the back. Like sit wherever you want. doesn't matter. We're here for an hour. Just pay attention and do whatever you want. Right. She throws me. And when I hit the ground, she's kicking me. And I'm like crawling, like in a movie when you're crawling away from the bad guys and they're like kicking you. And she goes, this guy thinks he's a comedian. You watch him. Like, because he was new. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so he goes, hey, when you go have a seat on a couch, I'll be right with you. And he goes to the back of the room because like a chameleon got loose or something. <laughs> he had to put it back under the heating lamp. <laughs> yeah. And then he comes back and he sits next to me on the couch and he goes. Uh, Smoke this. <laughs> I wish. He goes, uh, so are you really a comedian? And I was eight years old, but he actually yeah. looked me in my yeah. eye and asked me. And I like I really had to think about it, and I went, yeah. And he goes, all right. He goes, you know, there's a time and a place for. It. He explained to me like timing. Yeah. And Mrs. Stein, that's the never the time. Wow. And he just he like was like the most supportive, cool guy that's in the world. That's great. And you got so, guidance. I got alcohol. You, but that isn't alcohol. Just guidance. Isn't alcohol mm-hmm. the creative energy that wants to express itself through you? No, that's urine that comes after alcohol. Wants to get out of you. See, that's cool. You did you know you were a comedian at eight years old? I didn't know it until he asked me straight up, and I. But he asked me in a way where it wasn't rhetorical. He asked uh-huh. me like, "I need to, t- for this conversation to continue. You have to contribute. And, like, what's going yeah. on? Are are you a comedian? <clears throat> and I know you. I know you're Carlin. We've had this discussion before. Your Carlin was your guy. Oh, the best ever. Yeah. See, I was prior. I mean, Carl, I still respected Carlin, and I was so thrilled when I got to work with him. Prior to, but, but prior to me is like three albums that are unintelligible, mm-hmm. and Carlin never put out that clunker. Yeah, like, well, it wasn't it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Was what I I felt with Prior? I always felt with Prior. Carlin was always I was always admired uh, Carlin because of the structure and the writing and what he was saying. Carlin even said he goes, "I don't improvise; I memorize." Yeah. So just the craft of what he did, I was just very respectful and impressive of. But Pryor ripped my heart out. Pryor just, I felt it. I felt it moved me. And Robin, too, you know, with, uh, with everything. He died last month. Yeah. And... But the end of his special, Live at the Met, when he does the story about his kid, and at the end, he, he plays the kid and he puts his hand up. Fuck it. He does the callback and he's the kid, and your heart just goes out. I went, that's what I want to do. I want to be able to see if I can move people. Live at the Met... Um... That was the one I watched on like VHS mm-hmm. with my parents. Yeah. And he says, it looks like fucking Earl Scheid's living room. Yeah. And like he said, fuck shit. He talked about cocaine and Mr. Fallis and mm-hmm. fucking. And for some reason, because it was Robin Williams, it was okay for like, I don't know, 12 year old yeah. to watch it with Well, it was parents. Mork. You yeah. Know, they couldn't keep you from and like, Mork. It was to- like nobody went like, this is a little dicey for my kid to hear. It's because he said it. Yeah. <clears throat> it was okay. And I was on Ron and Fez. They called me the night. Mm-hmm. Robin died to comment. And I didn't really know. My wife knew Robin really well. Mm-hmm. And when you talk about like the greatest of all time, yeah, all of a sudden, the I know you, Adam, mm-hmm. well. Like when Robin Williams died, I know you felt the way I felt. Like it fucked me. Yeah, I cried. It was a hammer. I cried. It was a fucking hammer. Like a family member died. Yeah. Like, and I was surprised at how deep it went in and pulled mm-hmm. shit out of me. And I think, like, that's greatest of all time is when you're done. Like, you think you know him. Mm-hmm. Even though I met him one time, like, at mm-hmm. the Emmys, I was like, how do, 
wait, what? Like, yeah. my best friend died. I didn't even know I liked him that much until he died. Yeah, well, because mm. he, he allowed you to know him because he was so honest on stage. I met him a few times. I had a great just one-on-one conversation with him about 20 minutes maybe at the cellar, the back room at the cellar. He was there wearing a baseball hat, and, and he was very kind to me. He was just very kind and open and the tent and present. And he, and he even said, he goes, I, I hear you're very funny. I hear you're very funny. I can't go in the room because I'll, everything goes into my head and I'll, I might say one of your jokes and I don't want to do that. So he was aware. He took a lot of shit. People, the comics love shit. a lot of comics, not mm. the ones I hang out with or the ones you hang out with, right. for that matter. But there's a lot of comics. They really thrive on like just kicking shit around. Mm-hmm. And Robin uh, Williams took so much shit for being like a thief. Mm. And they said he was a fucking hack. Mm. And it's like, you know what? All you hipster douchebag comics that can only perform for your crowd. I hope mm. you're sitting smug yeah. with your fucking ironic Pokemon poster in your bedroom because he's fucking dead. Yeah. You won, hipster. Yeah. He, one of the, you'll never be near him. Yeah. I wish to be that hacky. Trim your beard and keep working on the second novel, which is a follow-up to the first book you didn't finish at the coffee shop. Yo, I don't know. The crowd got a little out of control, so they weren't into me. Well, it's your fucking job to make the out of yeah. control crowd your crowd. Oh, the checks control. went down. Guess what? You got to keep dancing during the check spot, you pal. You're re-arrange. the head. Is your name on the fucking building? Do your job. Close you, this out. You said the checks went down. I don't think the average listener really realizes what an important spot that is in our life. Yeah. Please go. The check spot, when we work, there's an MC, there's a middle. And then you have to close the show. And during the closing of the show, about maybe 25 minutes or a half hour in, the checks come down for the evening's uh, show. And everyone's attention goes to the check. And everyone's attention is doing math. And, honey, do you have the card? And who the fuck drank this? And wait a minute. <laughs> we didn't order these nachos. And all hey, that shit's who had going the on. the tax? Yeah. Who the fuck what ordered the tax? Fuck? Did we break something? You know? And, and then they're all sitting there thinking, he ain't that funny. So you, you had gotta... to get the commemorative glass? Yeah. Oh, good. This is what we need. It's going to come off as soon as you wash your dishwasher. The heat's going to take off the gu- improv thing on the glass. Meanwhile, so... I'm in the middle of walking. Yeah. yeah and you're... If I could just have your attention instead yeah. of the check spot. Yeah. And it's look your up job at me. to keep them, keep them entertained. It is a tough hustle. And the other thing you don't want to do... Uh, again, Jesus, Carol Lee, you know what's amazing, mm. Adam? Wow. I, when you and I were coming up in New York, I thought that was, uh, and I do still, Yeah. it was never more fertile. Like, we'd be at the Boston Comedy Club, it'd be me, you, uh, Dave Chappelle, Dave Attell, it'd be Colin Quinn, it'd be mm. fucking Patrice O'Neill, Red Johnny and the Round Guy, you know, John <laughs> DiMaggio, uh, Keith Robinson, Jim Norton, Louis C.K., yeah. Sarah Silverman. That's uh, That's Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday night. And then we, I don't think, you and I know it, and Mm. we talk about it all the time, like, and we all helped each other. We all broke each other. We didn't really help each other. We broke each other's balls. We made each other better, but we also knew the etiquette of the room. Like, I remember when we were sitting there, there was someone on stage. I think it was, I think you were on stage or you explained it. He goes, watch. He goes, he's killed. How the fuck am I going to follow that? So watch what's going to happen. And someone blew the room up and someone had to go afterwards. And the MC brought him down and refocused him because the MC knew that was his job. Not going up, going our next act, you know, whoever it was. Rick Crone was real good at that. Rick Crone would go up after someone lit the room up, and he knew that he had He'd to do reset like two the songs energy. And the piano. Two songs and a piano, reset the energy, bring someone else, and it was just you could work on stuff. You didn't have to attack. It wasn't like I have to kill. I could actually get work done because there's an etiquette of the room. I love Rick Crone. I'm so glad you said his name on the More Stories podcast. Yeah. He's a good guy, man. But you're right, and there's a lot of. And, like, when we were around, like, that, like, when I think back, like, of course we all headline now. Yeah. Because that's what we, it was every single night. And then when we weren't doing comedy, we were in somebody's living room smoking pot or drinking a lot. Trying to write. And then just breaking each other's balls and writing and firing. And then, you you know. But then when, again, going back to Carol Leifer, she was telling stories. And I was like, holy fuck. Like, every person you name Mm -hmm. is Paul Reiser, Jerry Seinfeld, Larry Miller, Larry David. Yeah. She was doing a college with Paul Reiser. And and I'm like, Jesus. Like, I thought my generation of comics was... Mm. I didn't want to say generations and make her feel old. Right. But I was like... Well, it's true. We had a... You know, when when you did it back in the day... You know, years ago. We used to write it on vellum. You guys have these computers now. (laughs) We had to skin our own animals. (laughs) Vellum. We skinned our own animals. Larry Miller used one as a toupee. (laughs) Tom Valenti's <laughs> carpets and toupees. Wall to wall, ear to ear. Whatever surface you need covered, you come to Valenti's. 
Hi, I'm Tom Valenti. You may notice in my last commercial, I was completely bald, and now I have a beautiful lush head of hair as I'm standing on a beautiful seagrass carpet. And it changes colors with your outfit. <laughs> a mood hair? Mood hair. Mood hair. <laughs> Hang it off, put it on. Are you in a shaggy mood? No. Do you need a trim broad loom for a wedding? The bangs will stand up when you're angry, and the back <laughs> will go down when it's time to make love. Tom Valenti's wigs and carpets. He's in the mood. Look at the pot in the carpet on his head. I'm standing on a carpet from Tom Valenti's wig and carpet important. And then the wig side gets way more big than, uh, <laughs> than the other side. So he's got to change it to wigs and carpets instead of carpets and wigs. <laughs> your wife will know when you're in the mood. She will look at your head and know that there is a creative energy inside of you <laughs> that needs to get out. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I love guys that do their own commercials. <laughs> and uh, Red Giant and the Round Guy used to do that. Used to do a lot of comics do it, but my favorite, John DiMaggio, has been on the podcast a ton. How you great guys. did you did you hear him? Do, and, and again, here's the digression. Did you hear him do the Audible commercial on Proops' podcast? No, but I've heard it on regular... Audible when you don't feel like reading. That's Johnny. <laughs> That's Johnny. Greg Proops is like my favorite podcast. Isn't it great? I just drove to Denver and I listened to like four Proopses in a row. Yeah. Smartest man in the world. I got the app on my phone. I got him. I got Paul F. Tompkins and Corolla. I got me. Dana. Dana Gould is good. I couldn't find Dana. Yeah, Dana's is really He good. has his own podcast. Yeah. Oh, the Dana Gould hour. Yeah, Dana Gould hour. Have you ever listened to Paul F. Tompkins? Yeah, I got to listen to it. I got to get it. It's trippy, man. Yeah. Like, it's. He... I listen to you guys and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. I have no ambition. I, I can't do this every week. I forget to take the fucking garbage out. I got to do a podcast every week. <laughs> when you're done taking out the garbage, <laughs> yeah. switch into your handsome wig. Yeah. <laughs> I am wearing my podcast hat of hair at Valenti. <laughs> Maybe it you gives need you to... something to say. Maybe your wife gave you a honey-do list. <laughs> this is your to-do hair. <laughs> Taking out the garbage, trimming the driveway, and mowing the lawn should be done with a breathable cap of hair. <laughs> this is 100% horse hair from the Orient. Don't sweat your list or your head. It <laughs> breathes. Let your head breathe with Tom Valenti's wigs and carpets. <laughs> Red Johnny the Round Guy had a bit about people doing their own commercials. Yeah. And John DiMaggio would literally just dance like a little girl. There's, apparently, there's some home furnishing company. Or like, yeah. a, I, wait, I, we should just call him on the fucking phone and ask him. Yeah. It was a place where like they do weddings. Yeah. And uh, John DiMaggio, Tim, uh, the, Red John, the Round Guy, yeah. Tim, would put his finger up like a top and Johnny would stand there with his finger and twirl and around spin like around. Ballerina. <laughs> yeah. And Tim would cross his eyes and go, wonderful stylings. <laughs> and like that was the one of them kept saying, after the other guy did the whole spiel, he'd go, wonderful stylings. <laughs> I love when guys fucking do their own I like when, when there was this one. In, well, Tom Carvel was the one when we were kids. Remember the Carvel commercial? Wednesdays or Sundays. At well of a cake for a well of a dad. Cookie Puss. Cookie Puss. Cookie O Puss on, on St. Patrick's Day. David Tell's Great Pit. What? Mother's Day, Cookie Oedipus. <laughs> Dear Mommy, I love you more than you know. A boogly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Carvel did his own commercials. Yeah. Uh, and that's like a dying breed. That's what's great about going on the road as a stand up is like regional television. First of all, regional newscasters yeah. are the most amazing things in the world. Mm -hmm. And they all have like Emmys. The you, local Emmys. Yeah, you yeah. go to like Des Moines, Iowa, and like the guy's got like they do like a thing in his office, and you just see like six Emmys. You're like, mm. I never even what yeah. the fuck? This yeah. guy's six Emmys for reading the teleprompter. Mm -hmm. He's a balloon head. Meanwhile, in Nicaragua, political mm -hmm. unrest continues. Yeah, and he's got six Emmys. Yeah, uh, but uh, my experience is Adam Ferrara, yeah, uh, this... Las Vegas, the single best regional do-it-yourself commercials. Mm -hmm. One guy got a show out of it. That guy Chop It. Who? The auto. It was a car lot. The car. Oh yeah, that guy, the what chopper. About 1999? The chopper. Chop it. Yeah, the big guy, the yeah. chopper. Chop it. That's and then when it, they was finally, a commercial. It wow. became it became a TV show. It was a Why commercial. do I write? Why do I write? <laughs> Why do I think I have to say something? Why do I try to contribute to him? I'm an asshole. I need a rug and a commercial. That's what chop I need. It. Chop it. You keep naming prices. And this is how you know when it was the act. He never said like sold. Mm -hmm. He would go like you guys yell out numbers, and then I'll, this is how you know the, the deal was the actual price. Okay. Everybody yell out a price. Twenty-five. Chop it. Seventy-five. 
Why would you go up? <laughs> the fuck's the matter? All right, we'll start over. 2010, <laughs> Cadillac Escalade, 22,000 miles. Look at these spinning rims. What do you think this thing costs? $28,000. Chop it. $22,000. Chop it. $17,000. Go get some gas. You're kidding me. $17,000. Go now get I'm going to get the hair. I'm so happy. <laughs> Are you driving around in a Cadillac Escalade with spinning rims? Tom Valenti. <laughs> Wigs, carpets, and rims. <laughs> and when he said, uh, go get some gas. When he said, go get some gas, that was a sell. That's that how you knew. Soul. Yeah, now go get some gas. And he had like a little Indian guy that would dress in blue paint. Uh, little, uh, he called them blue Blue beanie. paint? Yeah, it was like a little blue what guy. What was this? Casual racist Friday? Are you kidding? <laughs> Casually racist Friday. What the, a, an Indian guy in blue paint. Yeah, he's just like like a little genie guy. Uh-huh. And he had like all these weird people in his commercials. That's how he got the fucking Fuck. TV show, The King of Cars or whatever it's called. Jesus. It's not, you know. I midgets, remember. I, I think it's, it's not gone midgets now. Pit bulls. Yeah. What's that one? Pit boss? Pit boss. The guy with the pit bull. He's yeah. a midget though, right? Yeah, yeah a little, little guy with the, with, I think that's gone too. I saw that on an airplane once. How do you care? How'd you like to be in that meeting when you call a guy that's three feet high that's dedicated his entire life to mm-hmm. helping uh, abused animals and you got to come in and go, you know that fucking lightning in a bottle you brought to me? Mm-hmm. You're fired. Yeah. The American people have spoken and your show is average. Yeah. That's it. I'm sorry. You don't have the ratings. I know this. Fucking three feet high. I put my little t- swollen head into a pit bull's mouth every oh. day. No, he got hit, Adam. <laughs> he got hit? He got hit. His Tom Valenti wig was too tight. His head <laughs> swelled up like a fucking balloon. That's why Tom Valenti had to transition into hubcaps and rims. I would never say something like that oh, about a little funny. person. that's funny. So, yeah, that show, that was a weird show. There's, there was another one. That was Pit Boss. Pit Boss. Apparently, the Learning Channel is all about little people making chocolate. Oh yeah, the 20. chocolate one. I mean, how Willy Wonka can you get? We have we have we have height height small people making chocolate. Yeah. Why don't you just paint them orange? They call it the little <laughs> <laughs> What is this? Casual Yeah, casual racism offend. Friday. The little people Fridays? Yeah. <clears throat> it's Monday, obviously. You're listening to the More Stories podcast. I like the show The Man with the One Hundred and Thirty Five Pound Scrotum. <laughs> There's I'm, a guy with hundred and thirty five pounds. Well he died scrotum. recently. Uh <laughs> I don't know how he died, so probably fell down his stairs. He was a fat guy. Yeah. And I never understood yeah. how a guy with 130... If I gave you that kettlebell that weighs 35 pounds, told yeah. you to carry it around for 10 days, you'd, okay. be, you'd that, be fucking ripped. Okay, but let me tell you something. That just doesn't happen. You like it, There's a gradual buildup to... Yeah, like get, when he was a baby and had one pound nuts. Yeah. You go, this is I think what's crazy. the warning sign? If you got a butt of the door jams to get out of your fucking house, <laughs> have a salad. But it, Yeah, but it was his balls, Adam. But he's big. He was a big fat. You, you don't get balls that size being a small man. No. It, the balls were, he wasn't, it wasn't a show about a fat guy. He no. Ha- as Carlin would said, who happened to be mm-hmm. black. Right. He did happen to be black. Right. I love that bit. Well, was his mother black? Yes. <laughs> was his father black? Yeah. Yes. Did they fuck? <laughs> <laughs> then how could he happen to be black? <laughs> you were expecting something different. Um, no, it, his balls weigh 100. He had some kind of like gigantic. So he's not a fat he, elephant tie to the nuts to like in, yeah. in Breakfast Club? Exactly. You want to see a picture of a guy with elephant ties and nuts? Yeah, it was that guy. That's the guy? No, I don't know if that's the guy. But he had 135 pound balls and he carries his balls around in a baby carriage. And, and some around. suit went, that's a show. Yeah, and I say it on stage. That guy's on fucking television. Yeah, and I'm that in, guy's a fucking... You, yeah, you had a I'm big, in fucking used, Tacoma, September 6th with Adam Ferrara. No, that's me. See, Adam it's Ferrara, right here, it's right here on the plate. <laughs> Adam wrote his date down on, on a, a paper, paper plate. plate in the radio station. Um, you had a bit about the, uh, the the little guy selling real estate. Oh, I forgot. Oh, oh, my God. That was brilliant. I have forgotten I so remember much that bit. Material. I'm going to tell you this bit. Listen to these commercials. All right. I'm going to say something that's going to surprise you. Are you ready for this? You should be snacking more. You need to be snacking more. You have to. What's wrong with you, JJ? How can you tell me to snack more? I'm trying to lose weight. I'm going to get fat. No, you're not. Naturebox.com slash more, M-O-H-R. Naturebox gave me hundreds of delicious snacks, and I mean delicious. Guilty about eating them because they're better for me. They're natural, zero trans fat, zero high fructose corn syrup, You'll even find snacks that are low on sugar, non-GMOs, and without gluten, and they ship to you for free. You know that cranky moment right around 3 o'clock? You want to tear into a box of donuts or some weird chip with some stupid salt all over it? Don't don't do it, man. You know what I do? Peanut butter and jelly granola from Nature Box or baked sweet potato fries, sweet blueberry almonds. Mm, mm. 
No more hungriness. No more crankiness. Now I'm going to make you really happy. Ready? If you try naturebox.com slash more right now, they are going to give you 50% off your first box. You should be snacking, but you got to snack smarter. Stay full. Stay strong. Do what I do. Go to naturebox.com slash more and get 50% off your month's first box. Naturebox.com slash more. You know why I'm whispering? Because I'm so relaxed. I'm having good snacks. Naturebox.com slash more. Geico presents Fan Mail to a Pig. Dear Maxwell, first off, I really enjoy your commercials about Geico's app. I watch them over and over and over. They make me both laugh and very hungry. Weird. Anyway, I just want to let you know how Geico's new claim status updates on the app really blow me away. Getting those updates makes me think of you. I'd like to thank you in person. Just send me your address. All the best, Big Bad W. Sure thing, Big Bad W. I got a pen. It's 802 Not Gonna Happen Lane. Claim status updates just to tap away on the Geico app. Warriors, I'm extremely excited to tell you about my new smarter home security. It's simply safe. I didn't think home security could be this easy. I've wanted a system to protect my home for years, but it's always a hassle. Yeah, you got this dispatcher that sends a guy to your house in like three hours. Most alarm companies, it's the same old story. Aggressive sales guys, ridiculous hardwired systems, and the long term lock in contract. I don't want to sign one anymore. That's why I went to Simply Safe, simply with an I. Simply Safe. I could tell you how easy this is because I went online. I customized my system. A few days later, boom, up and running at my doorstep. Somebody comes through my gate, front yard gets lit up like an operating room, and they hightail it out of there. And I'm not a tech-savvy guy at all. In fact, I'm an idiot when it comes to tech. The people at Simply Safe they hooked me up, up and running in 20 minutes. I'm not exaggerating. No contracts, around-the-clock protection, 15 bucks. That's it. No, 15 bucks. Seriously? 15 bucks. Most guys charge like five times that, and I can leave at any time because there's no long-term contract. But you know what? I'm sticking around because I'm happy with it. I want you to have the exact same protection as me and my family and my house. It's so easy. Go to simplysafej.com. Simply with an I, S-I-M-P-L-I, safe. They're going to give you 10% off. They're already giving it to you for 15 bucks. Now they're going to give you 10% off uh, on top of that. What else do you want? These people are great. Simplysafej.com. Yeah, I had a bit, uh, talking about people that do their own commercials, I can't believe you reminded me of that. Now I'm, like, concerned where these little men went. (laughs) Yeah. They were midget men. Yeah. Little people, dwarves. But they were identical twins. Mm Mm-hmm. So the first thing the doctor says is, congratulations, it's a boy. Uh Uh-oh. As the second thing the doctor says. (laughs) And then he goes, oh, my gosh. And then another baby comes out, and the doctor goes, ooh. And you're like, wait a minute. Why? What's going on? Mm-hmm. And then he goes, "Here's your baby, eight pounds." And you go, "Oh my God, I got an eight pound." No, it's two babies, eight pounds, and they're five yeah. years old. <laughs> they're identical twin. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm telling the listeners. I know you know they were identical twin midgets, and they were the shortest men I've ever seen. Have you ever seen guys shorter than that? No, I remember the commercial. They wore suits and ties. Yeah. And they trucked around like Beverly Hills. And With they sold gorgeous women, full-size women. Yeah. yeah. And Cars. They, they, they had Ferraris. that walk. Yeah. Like the legs and arms weren't like in sync. Like the legs no. never told the arms which way they were no. going. Yeah. And they it had- It was like they were constantly fighting the wind. <laughs> well, I think they were. And gravity. <laughs> yeah. The little ties. Yeah. <laughs> like if you took their tie- and put it to you listening right now. It would be like a pocket square. But to them, it like was all the way yeah. down to the belt. They looked tight. Yeah. They were, they were all... The, it's too long. I keep tripping on it. Hey. And they... they I forgot their names. It was like, hey, where are the... Uh, the Jenner brothers. And we're yeah. selling houses. And they had the funny, you know, weird yeah. voice. Because their voice boxes are smushed up, I guess. And then I remember when the wheels... I was all right with all of that. Mm-hmm. As a daytime pot smoker. mm mm-hmm. Here we go. The Rice Brothers. Vito just looked it up. Known for the shortest living twins. Parent- Uh-oh. Parentheses. Former. Uh, oh, no. That means just somebody beat them for their title. <laughs> somebody somebody else. Uh, either someone shorter or they're dead. As, as Norm MacDonald would say, hey, that just means somebody else uh, won. <laughs> uh, they were born in 51. Greg and John Rice. West Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, oh, John Rice is dead. Dead yeah. complications of injuries, estate agents and investors. They were two feet ten inches tall. Ah, uh, that is fucking yeah. we. Yeah. yeah, that is we. W e e. That's a legal Scrabble word. Identical twin dwarfs uh, appeared in various commercials and infomercials until the death of John Rice. Ah, oh, that's fucking terrible. <laughs> 
Yeah, but I remember that there was it was all those get rich quick commercials. Like you can you can win a, you can make a thousand dollars a week just putting ads in the paper. Like what the fuck is this guy selling? Uh, they were Boy Scouts. Yeah. It's, I'm reading there. All right, this is terrible. I can't read no, that shit. What, how, how did he die? <clears throat> didn't, Vito, you look it up while I talk to Adam. But he, I remember when he the drowned wheel, in a puddle. I was. <laughs> how did he? He broke his leg. He died from breaking. He died a leg? of a broken leg coming out of a Palm Beach bank. <laughs> All that money. We're making shitloads of money. This is going to go on for. <laughs> Tom. He was scared. Tom, for... get up. <laughs> Tom. I am standing. Tom. <laughs> He died from complications of going under anesthesia. Oh. Greg Rice continues to uh, carry on the work Wait a minute. What, what was the anesthesia? Someone opened an ammonia bottle? What? <laughs> they smelled this witch hazel. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking blew diamond tap in his nose. <laughs> <laughs> I was Is this right. the cough syrup with codeine? I, Tom? Tommy! Tom! Stop fucking around. It's not funny anymore. Pick up the money, Tom. Tommy. Wow. So, yeah, he died. We just learned. Yeah. But the thing was, and what I used to say on stage, <laughs> Vito's pulling up. What, what, is he, what has he got oh. now? <laughs> Look at the little Rolls Royce. What? Yeah. The little boss I man. I this. But I was okay with them being the world, two feet, 10 inches tall, selling real estate. Like, because as a daytime pot smoker my yeah. whole life, like, that was enough to, like, shake me to my core. Mm -hmm. But I was all right. Why? It's when they needed a wrinkle in the commercial and they started walking around with a Great Dane. <laughs> They had a Great Dane. And that was the bit was the fact that they were all under a Great Dane's balls and cock looking at real like the Great Dane makes a left the and truth they're just of the drowning is, in dog dick. It was a dra it was a Jack Russell, but they're only this big. <laughs> a teacup Maltese. Yeah. All those poor wow, guys. I remember that bit. I remember howling at that bit Let's when I Let's play Monopoly. That. Tom, get out of the thimble. Stop goofing off. <laughs> I'm in my car. No, you're not. You're on go. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> You ever do any? Did you ever audition for commercials in the day? Like, I did. Yeah, when I, when I I did an Olive Garden commercial. Well, with, out here, you're yeah. all family. When you hear your family, my wife is so disgusted by their commercials uh -huh. only because they use the expression "cousin party." Cousin party. She goes, "Well, we when we have our cousin party, and every so, time the commercial totally goes on, different meaning in Arkansas." My wife. <laughs> my wife goes, "What the fuck is a cousin party?" Mm -hmm. In Arkansas. In Arkansas, yeah, you're, you're gonna leave holes. sticky. Huh? You're leaving sticky. Leaving sticky in a cousin party. You did an Olive Garden commercial. I did an Olive Garden commercial. I was the voice of Carling's beer in England. I did a bunch of those voiceover ones. In this voice? Uh, no, I put on some stupid voice. Not a British voice. No, no, it was an American. It was a. I was a, this this loud. I forget what the hell I did. So I like, remember. I remember we were talking, and you did Buddy's voice for the parrot. You were doing Buddy Hackett's and voice. Oh yeah, that was Buddy Hackett. Yeah. the bird fly. Fuck! I wish I saved the messages he left me. Adam, it's Buddy. Yeah. I'm going to go gas up the cars, and I wanted to know if I could pick you up. You could come with me. Yeah. <laughs> he would leave jokes on my machine. And me and uh, Jeff, uh, what do you, remember the Serengeti? The Serengeti is... Serengeti is Singita, his wife's animal his thing. His wife's animal thing. We would do it every year. She, c wives of comedians are like first ladies. Just yeah. give them a fucking charity to stay out of the way. Yeah. Lady Bird Hackett. We had to go save the friggin' animals every year. Would you year do my go. wife's charity? Of course It would keep buddy. me out of the doghouse. Yeah. <laughs> Come and do us a favor. I What's remember the charity? Doghouses. <laughs> <laughs> me and Ross, me and Jeff Ross went to lunch with him once. We picked him up. He wrote a poem for us. We pulled into this little Chinese restaurant in a strip mall. And uh, he opens up the trunk. And he goes, don't tell Shelly. He opens up the cover, and he's got a bottle of brandy and Dixie cups. Remember the Dixie cups yeah. with the jokes on them? <laughs> they used to be in the bathroom. He yeah. still got them. Yeah. And he pours. He goes, I like to have a belt around noon. He made a toast. We shot down some brandy. He's looking up your address. <laughs> Isn't that nice? And we went and ate the greasiest egg foo young, and he was just telling us stories for hours. He taught me a lot. Uh, well, he's been coming up a lot lately in the podcast. But I remember we were at a barbecue place in uh, Beverly Hills, and he mm -hmm. goes, do you realize how many different kinds of comedy there are? Mm -hmm. And I go, yeah. And he goes, no, you don't. And I'm like, yeah, I do. And he goes, you got no idea. Like, this is a ketchup bottle, and this is A1 sauce. But if I, what the fuck? And he makes the bottles. They got in yeah. an argument. Yeah. And But the argument was so fucking riveting <laughs> that he created. He goes, I don't like when you use that language around my daughter. <laughs> Fuck you and fuck your daughter. I think she's missing a rib. <laughs> and he just went on, and I'm staring at the table. And then he just puts the bottles down. He goes, "You, you didn't even know that could happen." 
And I'm like, well, I don't think anybody does. He goes, that's what you got to do every night. You got to make the audience. You got to get a ketchup bottle and an A1 bottle. Maybe not these two in particular. <laughs> right. But like just basically you got to just create some shit where the audience goes. They completely forget they're even looking at a show. I'm staring at these fucking two bottles arguing. <laughs> and you're like, shit, buddy wants me to be a prop act. Fuck your daughter. She's missing a rib. <laughs> like I still remember what he said. So what did you do in the Olive Garden? Did you have when words? you hear your family, I was, I was, I was the, the wop of the, the month. Listener, this is a fascinating thing. What the was wop of the, the month? wop of the month? Whatever it was. What you, is they, this? I remember when it was an old casual. Yeah, it was anti-Italian. Friday. I can say it. I'm Italian. You're allowed to hit your own group. Uh, Carlin, you can hit your own group. Remember that one when he when he said when we'd say something where he thought we'd get in trouble. He goes, "Those are my people. I'm allowed to say shit like that." I love when Carlin said, "I love people. I hate groups." Mm-hmm. We can be a member of the Ku Klux Klan, and we can be on transatlantic flight. But the moment you have three of your buddies with you, I hate your guts. Yeah. Fuck Tucker. Tucker sucks. Mm-hmm. To me, the funniest sentence in the history of comedy. Only three words. Fuck Tucker and sucks. When he talks about, like, soft names make soft people. Yeah. Tyler and Tucker and Todd. Mm-hmm. Fuck Tucker. <laughs> Tucker sucks. <laughs> Because in the audience, you're picturing a Tucker that you created. Mm-hmm. Like, you've created this person named... And fuck Todd and guys that look like Todd. Todd. Kyle. Mm-hmm. And, like, you've got to create all these people in your fucking... You're doing the work. Yeah. The best. Well, yeah, he lets you... He opens that up. He would... Just to listen to the way... The work that he put into everything was just... It was mind-blowing. I had assistant once. How, Johnny, Johnny how he Pul- constructed it. Johnny Pulos told me that... I didn't even realize it. He was just he was like my friend, my assistant at the time. He goes, no, he's an essayist. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, I could do George Carlin's act on an off-Broadway theater if nobody mm-hmm. knew who George Carlin was. And it wouldn't be stand-up comedy. Like, I could do it on stage. He was mm-hmm. an actor. He goes, I could do it on stage like as essays, yeah. as standalones. Yeah, it was that well-constructed. My favorite intro, I think John Stewart did it uh, at Aspen. When I think it was the 40th anniversary, Carlin's 40th anniversary or something. They were introducing him for his, his special at that time. Uh, and he said, the holy trinity of comedy is uh, George Carlin, Richard Pryor, and Lenny Bruce. The rest of us are just jerking off. Ladies and gentlemen, George Carlin. He interviewed Carlin on that aspect. Yeah. And Carlin went to a whole thing about genetics that, mm-hmm. like, fucked my head up. Yeah. He goes, everybody thinks it's hard work. It's not. It's genetics. Mm. Genetics. And he goes, you have it. This guy has it. That guy has it. If this guy's falling behind, genetics. Mm. And he just went on and on about the low end of the gene pool. And, like, mm-hmm. basically everybody that hasn't made it, just their fucking parents suck. <laughs> okay. And like, guys like you, Adam Farrar, are successful because it's <laughs> fucking genetics. Uh, You're an Italian. Your parents were fucking immigrants. They came over here. Working hard. And they worked their fucking balls It was the work ethic. I got the work ethic. and wigs and rims for everybody. <laughs> Adam Ferrara's House of Wigs and Rims. Come on in. We're rolling in. Put your lid on and enjoy the rest of your day. Now with live comedy. Adam Ferrara's House of Carpets and Wigs. Coming soon, a podcast when he gets some energy and ambition. <clears throat> Why do you want to do a podcast for? I don't. I, I don't have anything. I listen to the way, you, w- the ones I like. I like yours and Proops and, and Dana Gould's and Adam Carolla's. And I just like, I can't do that every day. I don't. Well, then don't. Do it once a I week. I don't. I don't do it once a week. I don't. I don't do much. I got to be honest with you. But you do comedy like a motherfucker. Yeah, because that's what I, I can do. That That's the outlet. And I think you said, I actually quoted you on Marin's podcast, I think. Oh, he must have loved that. Well, no, it was, I said, I th- did ass. you say, I, I, we had a conversation, and I always attribute this quote to you. I don't know if you said it. Is there a creative energy inside of you? No. You're a the, dick. No, the, crea- the quote is, uh, I don't know what I believe until I say it. Yeah, yeah, I did say that. That is yours. I, 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 I quoted you. I don't know what works until I say it. I don't know what I believe until I say it. Like yeah. comics go, I got to work some shit out. I'm like, you can work it out all you want. And a lot of comics do that. Like, I got to stay sharp. I could not do comedy. And I maybe I'm the outlier here, but mm. I think you're the same way. Like, yeah. if I don't do comedy for a month, I don't have to, like, as Barry Katz would go, you got to exercise that muscle. No, I don't. Because my mind is the muscle and I'm yeah. still thinking about it all the time. And the only reason I'm going on stage is because I know it's going to work. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't work, then I don't believe in it anymore. I get, well, I, I got to shake off the, if I haven't done it in a while. And, and if you're acting for a while and then you go to stand-up, it's a different thing. And I go, oh, yeah, I remember how this bit went and putting organizing it in my head. But what you said that rang true with me is the truth. Because to me, the laughter is the truth of whatever the thought or the moment is that I'm saying. And I can't, we can't lie on stage. It, that's the ultimate truth test so when the audience laughs i go okay that's what i believe they're laughing that's true to me that's my truth meter like we were going we had a conversation before about panic attacks when i was going through my panic attack we were talking about those things and what helped me was listening to my act 
because it kind of, oh, that's who I am. That's the truth of what I'm saying because I felt lost in everything. And it also brought me back to a, a place when I was a kid because I would listen to those comedy albums. So that was always comforting to me. Did you ever ever have a panic attack on stage? Mm, no, but I worked during a whole crisis period. And Phil Tag actually flew up from Florida. I had a gig at the Mohegan Sun. A friend Sun. of ours, great comic, Phil Tag Lafer. Phil, Phil Tag, yeah. So he flew up from Florida and drove me to my fucking gig and just threw me out on stage. And if things went bad, all I had to do was like go to the bullpen. He was going to come out and cover for me. How great was that? Because you were having panic attacks before the show. I was having panic attacks. Then we went on stage. You were, you I was fine. fine. The, the stage was the great cleanser. It was the great... Being in front of the audience was very comforting. Second yeah. show, when you do two shows, like Fridays and Saturdays, mm-hmm. you're in a club. Theaters are the best. There's no anxiety ever because you do it once and yeah. you're done. You're done, yeah. But for some reason, every town I go to, if you really want to see a great show, always come to the second show Friday. Friday. They're because drunk. Because we hate it. Yeah. We the hate comics it. hate They're it. They're drunk. You're drunk. We no, hate it. Yeah, you're drunk, and you're not listening. And and we're like, oh, I just did this. I just did it. Mm-hmm. And I was just in Denver last month, and I was like, it was really weird, Adam. Like, <clears throat> I've been on the same level of a Klonopin for like 18 years. Mm-hmm. No panic. No problem. Nothing. Good. Backstage at the Comedy Works in Denver. Mm-hmm. Big room, about 400 seats for a club that's really big, you know. And I was. The one in Lama Square, the one downstairs? The, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I was shaking. Really? Like, I was shaking. I had to take a shit. Mm-hmm. I took well. That you, could be it. I took no. It, it was all that was all systemic from the actual panic, mm-hmm. the the symptoms of it. And I actually went to my. I had brought my bag with me from the hotel, and I actually went to my toiletry bag and I took out like eucalyptus and I put mm-hmm. it in my nostrils to make mm-hmm. sure I could breathe. Yeah, yeah. Like I was fucking nuts. Really. And the whole time, and then when you're out there, the panic for me is like, I have 50 minutes to go. Mm. Like what the fuck? That's why it's always good to tour with people you know because you can go. Hey, Daryl Wright had that story, man. Come up and tell that again. And then yeah. I can go fucking dry heave and get my shit together. Yeah. And so far, so good. But yeah, I had a panic attack in Brea once. Uh, so bad that I quit comedy for two years. You're kidding. <clears throat> I've told this story before a lot. You didn't tell it to me. When I got divorced and when I got remarried, I was like super happy for the first mm-hmm. time. Everything got real still and calm. Yeah. But my old act was the angry yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking the stool guy. Yeah, yeah. And... It was like a snake that shed its skin, but when I went and did comedy, I had to go you get that back. awful skin and put yeah. it on. Yeah, you brought and it, it back. it gave me panic. You went back in an emotional state. And my wife yeah. said, don't do comedy anymore until you're just you. And just then go on. up and, as you just said, Adam yeah. Farrar, just go up and tell the truth. That's yeah. all she said. Yeah. And that's why you marry certain people. Sure, and yeah. when that person blows you, mm-hmm. when she doesn't feel well, mm-hmm. get the big ring, people. That's a- <laughs> Tom Valenti, big rings for blowjobs, <laughs> rugs, haircuts, and Anna Ferrara. You jokes. don't do it for yourself. Do it for the woman you love. She'll blow you even when she's sick. You don't even deserve her. She don't feel well. She don't want to be jostled. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Use the mouth or the hands. Ah. She don't want her body jumping around. That's You're it. an animal. Don't hold her ears. She knows what she's doing. Something about Jenna Jameson, early six inches we were talking about. Fuck. What was that? That was, that was a lot of cooking jokes in here. Yeah. What was the joke earlier about Jenna Jameson and six inches from your face? I think it was, and it came out of a Ralph Waldo Emerson quote. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> Adam, that's I want you to know one kids. thing, and that is to remember there is a creative energy that wants to express itself through you. And here it comes. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Do you have a website where people can email you? AdamFerrara.com, at Adam Ferrara on the Twitter and the Facebook. Uh, do you email people back? When I do. Okay, good. I do. Me I read too. them. It takes me a while. JaneMoore.com. Doesn't take me long at all. No? You know what you do? You do a little bit every day. Doesn't see? stack up. See? Yeah, you're good. You're good. You're uh, a lazy it, guinea from Long I, Island oh, is what I got, I'm learning. They're lazy. Conveniently and, located across from over the... Caesar's Bay Bazaar. It's not, it's not lazy as much as it's the ADD. Mine is fucking terrible. My ADD is just like, I, I, you know, oh, look, a bird. You know, just, I could be just wandering. That's why I started reading that thing on the fucking wall. It's like there's too much shit here for me to focus on. But you're not saying anything that every comic I know doesn't do. You got the ADD too? No. Well, I, I, well, I don't. How long you know? I didn't get that. I know. But pillar of the community. I know. I know. I, I knew about rock. the panic attacks. We talked about that. We talked about the anger. I'm we nuts. talked about. I got an 880 combined on my SATs. What is that? It's bad. That's bad? I, that does not get you into any school, let alone Marist. Okay. With Drafton Davis. hmm And the Flying Dutchman from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Rick Smith. Go see Adam Ferrara September 6th in Tacoma, Washington. You've been summoned, Moriers. Top Gear, September 30th. Email me at jmore.com. Yo, buy the T-shirts. And this is what you got to do. If you're going to get a Moriers T-shirt, mm-hmm. 
excuse me, wear it at another comic show and sit right in the front. And you'll be in his fucking head all night. Jay says hello. Hey, how you doing? Great show tonight. Do the midget. Oh, that's Jay's bit. I'm sorry. Hey, you're going to do walking tonight? Yeah, no, that's Jay's bit. Uh, maybe we should have went to see Jay. Hey, Dice. You know JJ? Can't believe I came to Tacoma September 6th and Jay's not here. I'll be there. I'm going to be there right with Adam. Come see us September 6th in Tacoma. Uh, and uh, Everybody. Adam Ferrara, I'm telling you, I put my name on it. One of the greatest comics out there. He works hard for a living. He may be a lazy bastard when it comes to <laughs> wigs and carpets. Put your name on it. Oh, the other two guys were Tanner Faust and Rutledge, Rutledge Wood. The two what guys. am I thinking of? You're thinking of the British show. These uh, were the other two guys they had for the American show. I was thinking of the young ones. from. Uh, Remember the young ones on MTV? We used to watch show. those. That oh, was I met great. Rutledge at the NASCAR Awards. Yeah. He's yeah. a great guy. And he's a good and a sweet man. He's mm. great. And Tanner Faust is great. And I like the guys. And they didn't want to do an imitation of the show because that's I didn't want to read for the part of Clarks. And I just, you can't imitate that show. They just wanted us to be us in that context. And I liked the guys. And I figured, well, we'll take a shot. And that's what took off. Top Gear, September 30th, History Channel. All plugs are done. Listen. Uh, oh, don't forget to go see Adam. Listen, I put my name on it. Adam Ferrara, <laughs> you will never not get your money's worth. There's never oh, a bad... Ch- it's true, Adam. You know you're a good comic. You know you're a great comic. We work hard at it. I saw you at the Beacon. Remember oh, a when, while when ago. you did the Beacon? At, at Dennis Leary's charity? Years ago. No, no. It was your show... I oh, when I filmed my special? I think that was it. I was at your the, special. The good old days when I was playing the same rooms as the Black Crows. That's a, yeah. oh, oh, the mighty have fallen. You're my Chris Robinson. <laughs> remedy, remedy, remedy. A buddy of mine told me a story of Chris Robinson uh, towards the tail end of the Black Crows before they disintegrated. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Robinson, I was told, somebody he has somebody, an assistant, that has like a coffee grinder, and they grind up mushrooms into powder. Really? And they go by Echinacea from like GNC uh-huh. or like Whole Foods, empty the capsules of Echinacea, mm-hmm. and they fill it with mushroom powder. Right. So like every night at Soundcheck, they're like, hey, here's your juice, here's your vitamin C, here's your Echinacea. And everybody in the band is like, wow, look at Chris getting his act together. And then two songs in, he starts looking at his hands yeah. like, sometimes <laughs> salvation. Yeah. Whoa. In the eye of the th- Does everyone see the dragon? Yeah. Does anybody remember? <laughs> he looks over at Audley Freed and thinks he is Jimmy fuck? Page. Wow. Yeah, he's tripping Jimmy balls. Jimmy Page, did, they did the Greek with Jimmy. Yeah, they yeah. did a big one. I know a couple Black Crow stories that would blow your mind. Jimmy Page. That one just did. You got more? Oh, I got a lot of Black Crow stories. A friend of mine was a roadie for the Black Crows, mm-hmm. and they were touring with Jimmy Page, like three dates with Jimmy Page. One yeah. of them was the actual Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Right. Because when you think Led Zeppelin and the Black Crows, you think friendly stand-up comedy, middle America. 11.30. We love, you and I both, huge Jay Leno fans. Yeah. Black Crows, Jimmy Page, a weird one. Yeah. 
Uh, maybe more Letterman nighttime mm-hmm. you know, gritty, grimy. Mm-hmm. Fucking with Jimmy at all. I forgot how much, when we were kids, we yeah. thought Jimmy Page was like an actual devil worshiper. Yeah. And then he like helped us think that, because he bought like Aleister Crowley's house. He bought the house. He bu- the he haunted w- axe murderer house yeah, in England. Yeah, he bought that kind of shit. He was writing if stuff. If you play Led Zeppelin 2 backwards. It rains or some it shit. Rains it rains frogs like, or something. Yeah. Yeah. And how many times on the vinyl did you play Led Zeppelin 2 backwards? Oh, yeah. You know how many times I'm like, don't open that album cover, man. You know, Zeppelin It'll freak you out. With the guy standing on the big, the, the, the lantern. guy ascending with the lantern. Zoso, Led Zeppelin 4, the album that has 18 names. Yeah. Led Zeppelin 4, Zoso, Zoso, Lantern Man. Lantern, and when they had the symbols and, and plants and pages symbol, because they were the strongest symbols were on the outside, and Bonhams and uh, 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 John Paul Jones was on the inside. I didn't know that. Yeah, they're the, they're the weaker symbols, so they're on the inside. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Come on, you used to get high. And then... Uh, <laughs> And John Bonham symbol is my it, file, man. And John Bonham symbol is actually, if you look close enough, it was the label for Ballantine's beer. Really? The three circles. And he died of alcoholism. Oh, the hilarity! My God, lock the door. <laughs> you go paranoid. Jimmy Page was thought of to be an actual devil worshiper. Now, yeah. to people younger than you and I, mm-hmm. a couple of guys hoofing it in our forties, yeah. you know, music today, there is. There, I don't know if there is like an actual like devil worshiping crew. No, uh, like well, nobody's... it was demonic because it, it's soulless. It's all auto-tuned. Yeah, you know? so like they really no... missed out. Like you really, as good as you think music is, you really have no idea because you're listening to Zeppelin after the fact. Adam Ferrara and I were afraid to unfold sure. the actual inside liner notes because there was a hex in it that yeah. Jimmy Page put on. Yeah, we were scared. You don't want to do that. And I remember we did Acid in Boston. It was me and like seven comics. It was like Steve. Remember Cato and Morin, the mm-hmm. comedy team? Yeah. We were, and Anthony Clark. I don't know if Anthony Clark Anthony was there, Clark. but we all were on mushrooms or acid. Something. We were tripping balls, whatever the fuck it was. Might have right. been both. And we watched Song Remains the Same. Yeah. And we all like looked at each other and we're like, oh, like he is the devil. Yeah, with like the Zoso with the, the big wide pants. And he's right, he's on a black he's horse. He's wearing the yeah. black uh, jumpsuit with yeah. the red rose up the side. Yeah, and then they got concert footage, and he's playing guitar with the bow. We're mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. The Thurman he had. The Thurman. Yeah, he's was, playing woo, the Thurman. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, we're that like, look, thing? he's making music with his hands, yeah. man. Fuck, he's not an instrument. He, he thought it was the devil, but it was just it was heroin. To uh, meet me in the afternoon right after my radio show, Jay Moore Sports, you you came in right at the end of that. Thank you. We were... Thank you for the audience of sweaty men. This yeah, is... it's a sausage party. Party in here, this we got is, some. Uh, this is fucking great. <laughs> I figured, what will make Adam Ferrara happy? It's Let's get a this and runway season in Milan. Wow, a bunch of dudes staring at you <laughs> as you sit here. What's the name of your car show? So I don't forget. Top Gear. Top Gear. Now, yeah. when do you guys come back on the air in Top Gear? Uh, we just we will come back September thirtieth. We have four more episodes that we just wrapped up. September thirtieth. September thirtieth, we come back, and you're going to be in. Where in Washington State? Uh, stand up by uh, September 6th. Uh, I'll be at Tacoma Comedy Club. One night only, September 6th. Why one night only? I got shit to do. <laughs> I got laundry. I got a lot of things to do. All right, Top Gear, September 30th. Yeah. And what back. channel is that? Uh, it's History. Now, what's historical about the cars? Is that because uh, History Channel now is just gone? It used to just be the Hitler Channel. Yeah, yeah. If you wanted to see anything about the Mein Führer? Yeah, you put on the History Channel. And I used to watch it all the time. I loved it because we win, and you know how it ends. You don't have to like <laughs> if you ending. fall asleep. You're like, ah, I know how this ends. Uh, how, they never found Hitler's body, did they? They no. He he was he, he shot himself. Or he got po- oh he who shot himself. He the shot. Ava Braun shot him, and then there was poison. There was a bullet. And then the Russians came in and go, we have the skull. Fuck you. That's the most Jewish explanation. There was a poison and a bullet and the Russians came in. I don't know. There was so much things going on. You should have just said all that in Yiddish. In Yiddish. There was poison. So when you go, does Top Gear approach Adam Ferrara to Mm. do the show or do you I had done another show. I was, uh, Rescue Me was coming to an end. Um, And I always wanted to do something with cars because I like cars. So I did this other show called The United States of Cars for History. It was a show that told, um, it was a cultural look at... uh, it was 1969. I took a Volkswagen uh, Beetle and a GTO. And who drove those cars and what was going on at that time and what did those cars represent to the people who drove them? They, they, we shot the pilot. They liked me. They didn't like the show. They had the rights to pop, Top Gear. And they said, you know, we're going we're gonna to do, uh, do you know the show Top Gear? And I was a fan from the internet. And they said, we're going to do the show. My first thought, Jay, was don't fuck it up because it was a perfect fucking show. I'm like, don't fuck it up. And he says, we want you to be in it. I'm like, well, I don't want to fuck it up. So meet the other guys because it was done by the same production company. So I met the other two guys. And they're British guys. No. Hello, podcast fans. Adam Carolla here. 
I'm leading the fight against patent trolls who are threatening this medium. It's not about me. It's about the podcast you're listening to right now. If I go down, this show could be next. Visit fundanything.com forward slash patent troll for more information on how you can keep podcasting alive. Thank you and mahalo. When shopping for car insurance, consider this. GEICO has been saving people money on car insurance for over 75 years. So if you're serious about savings, it's simple. Go to GEICO.com. After 75 years, they know how to save you money. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. If you want a battle, it's either that you will that you're wrong. You know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Hey, man. More Stories Podcast, Adam Ferrara. Hey, pal. Hiya, buddy boy. Nice to be back, my friend. I like when you text back and forth with Adam Ferrara. Mm-hmm. Uh, you always, you always, it's always pal. It's like, uh, it's the nomenclature. You're always- uh, You're my pal. You you are my pal, but yeah. you text exactly how you talk in real life. Yeah, th- there's not much of a stretch. This is pretty much it. There's not a lot of hitting meaning in me. You're not going to get Gary Oldman. God, he transforms into something else. It does. That doesn't happen. You're not the uh, Gary Oldman of comedy? No. Nah. I, think, I like to think Gary Oldman is the Adam Ferrara of acting. I love your thinking, pal. You like that? I do. Uh, so Congratulations. There's... Last time we did this, we were in a garage. No, we're I'm st- <laughs> still doing it in the garage. This uh, We're doing this More Stories podcast because Adam Ferrara was nice enough. Maybe the Don Fallon. Kirshner's rock concert, if <laughs> that was Kirshner. still on. Yeah, KTEL Records. Something. <laughs> yeah, a midnight special. So, <laughs> so uh, Rich Robinson is sitting by the pool. They're at a hotel in L.A. They're supposed to play Irvine Meadows. They have mm-hmm. one day off, and they're all just at like this hotel in Hollywood. And Rich right. Robinson's by the pool. It's like 9 in the morning. He's got a good... This, all right, he has his guitar out at the, at the pool. I play guitar. I would have done it when I, when I was in the no, band No, not college. if you were in the Black Crows, you wouldn't. Well, I don't know. You're the Black Crows. Yeah. If you right. got your guitar out at the pool, it's just to... If, okay, look, if, if I'm taking mushrooms at soundcheck, no, there's not rich. a lot of logical decisions yeah, being made. Yeah, but this is the other one. This is Rich, the brother. Oh, okay. So Rich, the brother, has his guitar out at the pool, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a bunch of chicks. They've been up all night. Jimmy Page goes, hey, I'd like to talk to you. And he goes, hey, uh, you know, no secrets, me and my friends, you know. I'm paraphrasing a lot of this. Right, story. okay. Protect the uh, uh, guilty. Okay. <laughs> so Rich Robinson basically says, like, you know... Jimmy Page is like, why don't you, yeah. maybe you and I could go over here and have a conversation. It's yeah. Jimmy Page. Yeah. And Rich Robinson goes, hey, man, you know, it's just me and my friends hanging out and tell me right now. Jimmy Page goes, all right. Jimmy Page goes, you know, I got like uh, 30 years of Led Zeppelin stuff I've been sitting on for a long time. Yeah. And all the riffs that I've just never been able to use. Your band, the Black Crows, is the first band I've ever felt that way, that I felt with Led Zeppelin. That's why I'm touring with you guys. And I, I'd like to produce like your next album, and give you some of these. Ri- and Rich Robinson just goes, but for listen, we're we're the Black Crows, man. Wow, we're all right. Jimmy Page says this to you, and Rich Robinson said, "We're we're all right. We're all right. We're the Black Crows. Appreciate it." So little time goes by, phone call comes in, and the, the band's told they go, "We got a problem." They go, "What's the problem?" It's like two in the morning. Mm-hmm. They go, "Jimmy's home," and they go, "He's well." Is he going to make it to Irvine Meadows in time? They go, no. London. Jimmy's home. He's in London. So he went from L.A. He was so <laughs> pissed off. It's Jimmy Page. Yeah, but it's Jimmy Page. He, a- you'd be lucky he just went home. He could slap a fucking hex on you oh, with all the right. black magic shit. Yeah, he You go like- play your guitar, it turns into a snake or some shit. I wouldn't fuck with Jimmy Page. He went home. Yeah, what happened? I'm peeing smoke. <laughs> you know, some fucking thing, they, some fucking hex they put on you. I'm not.